Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be making it so that we, if we don't have the bow, we can hit that fire key all we want and we won't fire an arrow. But uh, as soon as we go to a treasure chest here and we find the bow, we can then fire arrows. So stick around and let's get started. Okay, so Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to have the bow be an item that accrues in the world, and I'm going to have it be in a chest that's up here by this lake. And I haven't set up that room yet. I've only really set up room one and room two. So I'm going to create another room here, and I'll duplicate room two. I'm going to call this room three, which is going to be the lake room. So room three, parentheses, lake room. And I'll close my parentheses there. All right, now room three um, is not gonna have the turret log in it, so I'll delete that. Uh, room three is gonna have the room three VCAM. I'll recall this, I'll rename this. There we go. Um, I'll call this room three VCAM. And then for my room three polygon collider, I'm gonna bring these up. So I'm just going to actually look at the points and then just bring everything up on the x-axis by 25. So this is 25. Oh, I need to bring it up by 25 and over by 25. So this should be 25, 25. This should be 25, 0. This should be 0, 0. And then this should be 0, 25. So Let's take a look at that. Yep, that's good. All right. Now, close that. Um, I'm going to have zero enemies, zero pots. My virtual camera is the room three virtual camera. And then on the room three virtual camera, it says the player. We don't have any lookup set up. And then down here. Uh, we've got the room three lake room, can find the screen edges, no damping. All right, cool. So I don't need these room transfer objects. So my room transfers, let me just kind of go through these really quickly. And I will, I'm not going to delete them right now because I might want them again at some point in time to have the player jump or something. Um, so I'm just going to deactivate them, but I should be able to go into that lake room now without a problem. So let's try that out. All right, cool. So lake room it is. Oh yeah, so notice this, my camera's a little slow. And I mean, that's not ideal for a game that's gonna have like an action feel to it. So I'm gonna make a few changes to my room three camera really quickly here. So with that on, um, <laughs> let me turn it on here. Uh, so here's the virtual camera. I'm going to set a few things. First, I'm going to set the look ahead time all the way up to one second, and I'm going to smooth it out. And honestly, that should be good. I don't think I need to mess with the dead zone. I'm just going to do that. Let's try this now. So I'll hit play, and let's go back up to that lake room. All right, so you see that little yellow dot? That's the look ahead. It's trying to guess where the camera should be in order to look ahead correctly. And the higher you have this value, right now I have it at one, the more it's gonna look ahead. So if I turn that down to close to 0 0.5, see how it moves a bit more slowly? And the smoothing is kind of how quickly that moves. So if I have it at, say, I guess three is the lowest, but I have the look ahead time at one, it snaps right ahead. So you can play around with these to find something that works good for you. Um, that's probably pretty good. Okay, cool. Uh, and now I'm going to lose those values because I was in play mode. So 0 0.65 and then I'll set the, yeah, 20 is fine. All right, now I'm going to grab a treasure chest. So I'm going to go to my prefabs here my objects. Did I not put treasure chests in there? 
prefab. Did I not make them a prefab? Am I that, that much of a weird? Uh, yeah, I didn't make them a prefab. All right. Let's go to my objects. I'm going to grab treasure chest A. I'm going to put it in here as a prefab. And then up here, I'm going to bring out treasure chest A. I'm just going to put it up here in the corner. Um, and let's see what I need to change. I'm going to put this in room three so that it's organized correctly. Uh, context clue, this isn't going to have a small key. Instead, it's going to have a bow. Player inventory stored open, so I need a Boolean value. So I need to go to my scriptable objects. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Treasure chests, there it is down at the bottom there. Overworld chests. So I'm going to make this chest B. So I'll bool value for chest B. And this is going to be changed to be chest B. And this is going to get the chest B thingy thing, boolean value. Uh, raise item dialog box. It needs to know what the dialog box is in canvas. And it also needs to know what the dialog text is. Some people have brought it up that um, it's not very efficient and it's not for me to have these two items since they're both referring to essentially this item to have that be in my uh, references twice. If you wanted to, you could just have one reference for it and then find the text by doing find component in children text. Um, I just thought it was easier to understand this way, but it's not necessarily the cleanest way to do it. Okay, cool. So now we need to know what this is going to have. So this is going to have a bow item. And go up to my art here. I'm going to grab that bow. I'm going to pull that into the world. And let's add some components here. Let's add a... Actually, I don't need a box glider on this because this is going to be like a... It's going to be similar to the keys. So how did I set up my keys here? All right, so there's key door. Did I make my small key even a prefab? Am I, am I a moron? <laughs> Did I not do that? Good Lord, sometimes I do things and I have no idea why I did them the way that I did them. So I didn't make my key an item, but oh, but I did. That's what I did. I made a scriptable object. So in my scriptable objects here, I'm gonna go to my items. There it is. I'm going to create a new item. I'm going to call this bow. And this is going to get the bow sprite. So I can delete that bow from the world now. Delete. My bow is going to get the bow sprite. So in the art, bow. Item description. It's a bow! Exclamation point. Uh, it's not a key. And so that's going to add it to my player inventory when I go up to find it. So let's make sure this works like I would expect it to. So hitting play here. Okay, going up. And let's go up here to the chest. Probably put it too far in the corner. It's a small key. Is there a door nearby? You silly goose, you don't have... Oh, I forgot to actually change the item. All right, cool. So treasure chest B is getting a item scriptable object, and it's getting a bow. You are getting a bow. Cool. And then the other thing that we should see happen when we do that is we should see the bow be added to the list of items in the, uh, in the player inventory. And we'll be using that bow to decide whether or not we can actually attack with the with the bow. So I'm gonna go all the way up here again. It's bow! Exclamation point. Cool. Alright, nice. Now um, if I go to my player inventory, which is player stuff, player inventory, that bow is there. Now uh, what I'm going to want to do, my player, in the player movement script, already has access to the player inventory. So when they, uh, when we press the M button, 
Uh, before I even start this second attack coroutine, I want to make sure that I actually have access to the bow. So in my inventory script here, I'm going to create a method that's going to check for an item. So we're going to see public void check for item. And then this is going to have an argument with it, which is a string item name. All right, cool. So I want to say if um, items that contains and we want to find an item with actually let's instead of having this check for a string let's just have it check for an item so we'll call this item item so then good lord if items dot contains item then return true so this needs to be a bool and not a void otherwise return false so this is just going to tell whatever is asking it if we have a certain object in the inventory so this could be like uh, one of those wands um, it could be the the bow which is what I'm calling it so in here I've got my projectile I'm also gonna have a so I'm gonna have a header we'll call this projectile stuff and I'm going to put my projectile under here. And then I'm also going to give it the, um, we'll do public item bow. And so if, before we even run that second coroutine, we're going to say if player inventory dot check for item, and the item we want to check for is the bow, then we'll run this that check for item bow. And so we're only going to be able to fire if we have the bow in our inventory. So if I go back into Unity here, I'm going to reset my player inventory items to be zero. So there's no bow in there. And I'll hit play as soon as everything's done compiling. And if I did it right, I should hit the M button and have no arrows come out. So there we go. No arrows. It's not even stopping me because I don't have anything. But if I go up here to that treasure chest, I should see the bow appear in my items. It's a bow. Oh, okay. Oh, because I didn't tell the player inventory what the bow item was. So that's why. So my player projectile stuff, projectile is the arrow, and my bow is going to be my items, bow. There we go. Let's try that again here. Um, oh, I'll remove it from my player inventory too. So player stuff, player inventory, zero items. So now, still if I press M, I don't see any any bow appearing. And like I said, you could do like a fireball or I don't know, something fancy. And then up here, I'm going to go, it's a bow. And now I've got the bow in my inventory. And now I can fire them. So yeah, there we go. We're making an actual item. Now you could have that bow be something that you find in the dungeon, like Zelda would do. Um, that way you're getting like a power up. You'd have it with like a mini boss. Uh, magic. Yeah. So, yeah, there we go. We're all the time getting closer and closer to having this be a fully featured game. So, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow my Discord or me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. Discord's got a ton of awesome people in there. Um, yeah, otherwise you guys can have yourselves a wonderful day.
you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.